Alrighty, ladies, today we're going to be talking on the signs that your affair relationship is in fact a trauma bond. And essentially a trauma bond is often the act of submitting to, in this case, your affair partner in the hopes that they will hold you with higher importance, that you'll get loved and appreciated by them to avoid hurt, to avoid conflict. Essentially, you are putting them above your own, so putting them on a pedestal. And trauma bonding has so many different signs to look out for. Often affairs, affairs can be built from different trauma bonds. And it's really important to look out for, is my relationship a trauma bond? Because when it's a trauma bond, it can feel so magnetic. There's this strong charge, but as equally high, you, you feel in the beautiful highs that you feel in an affair relationship, they often have equal lows. And so there can be this real push-pull uh, dynamic going on in this affair relationship. And often if you are in an affair relationship and you are unsure of how to make it end or if you're wanting to leave or you're wanting him to leave his wife for you and you're not really sure where this is going, um, trauma bonding can actually make it a whole nother level of difficult because there's an unhealthy dynamic going on and in healthy relationships usually you come to the agreement that this relationship is no longer serving the growth of us moving of each person moving forward and you see that this is time to part ways but you can still love them and feel whole and supported by each other with trauma bonds, you can feel like you are losing a big part of yourself uh, when you step away from the relationship. So we're going to be going into the signs that your affair relationship is a trauma bond. And if you do resonate with a lot of these signs, then I have some more videos on trauma bonds and how to heal and break free from trauma bonds uh, to support you on your journey. So if you have just tuned into this channel and you don't know me yet, my name is Kate London and I'm an affair recovery coach helping women women that are in affairs, the other woman, the mistress, essentially women that are dating married men, if that is you and you're in an affair dynamic relationship and you're not really sure how to create the change that you so badly seek, you're feeling all these emotions, but you're not really sure what to do with them, then this channel is for you. I have been where you have been. I was in an affair for seven years and it has really motivated me and driven me to support you and to create educational and um, different strategies, tools, techniques to support you on feeling whole again. So we're going to get on to uh, trauma bonds. The first sign that I want to talk to you guys about is you sacrificing your own needs uh, to meet the needs of your affair partner. What this can look like is you essentially putting aside what's meaningful, what's significant to you in your life to put your affair partner first. And in any healthy relationship, this can, this is a beautiful thing. So we do want to be able to put our needs aside to serve our, our relationship. And that is a sign of healthy relationships. So what I want to get clear on here is what's the difference between healthy and unhealthy, between putting someone first and putting yourself first and when to do that. And the easiest way that I could describe that for you is how it makes you feel in the end. Does it lift you up or does it drag you down? When you're in a healthy relationship, if you want to do something, if you have certain needs, but you really care for your, your, your lover and you want to put them first too, serving them fills you up because you ultimately know you can fill yourself or you can get that need filled met by him at a different stage it's just like give and take and it's healthy 
where it becomes unhealthy is where you constantly putting him above yourself and not really tuning into your own needs, your own wants, your own desires. So really tuning in. That's sign number one, that you put aside your own needs to meet your affair partner's needs first. I love talking on boundaries and boundaries is so powerful. And where we can feel completely out of alignment with ourselves is often because our own boundaries are unclear and blurry. So what we need to get clear within ourselves is where are our boundaries? Where is the line? And where is this line unclear? Because if we are not clear within ourselves, what we stand for, what we choose to accept and don't accept, how is our fair partner going to know clearly this boundary line if we're not even making it clear within ourselves? So a really good example of where this boundary can be miscommunicated is essentially if he's if you're wanting an exclusive relationship with your affair partner and he's saying constantly like I'm going to leave my wife a wife I just have to wait on the kids or whatever it is the certain reasons why he can't leave his wife yet yet you continue to remain in the affair relationship with him then you are communicating to him that you're okay with the affair dynamic continuing to play out your your words are clear on what you want. You want exclusivity. You want an exclusive relationship with him, but your actions are also communicating that it's okay for it to continue going on the way that it is. So it's really important for you to get clear on what are my boundaries that I am willing and not willing to stand for and actually expressing those boundaries. But when we express them, we also got to show up with those boundaries and actually act on them. Because if we're not making actions that are in alignment with our words, then that's where they become blurred. Now, if the boundaries are blurred, then you're essentially enabling your affair partner to continue on the same path that he is continuing on. So are you enabling his behavior that is not in alignment for what you would like in an ideal relationship simply by not standing for what you want to stand for in a healthy relationship so it's time to really get clear and with trauma bonding it's super easy to just violate our own boundaries in the need to get their love and it can be scary breaking those ties and actually setting the bar for boundaries because we fear that we're going to lose their love if we set a new standard or maybe we fear the conflict that would arise if we set this new boundary what's going to happen there's going to be conflict we'll lose their love and it's so much easier to just go on with how it is but it's not going to make you happy in the long run so I just want to quickly go over a few signs that you could have blurry boundaries I've got a little bit of a list here that I'm just going to go through um one of the things is that it can look like you agreeing to your affair partner when you want to disagree. Where are you saying yes when deep down you want to say no? That is a sure sign that you, this could be potentially trauma bonding and it's also codependency. Um, another, so a sign for that could be something like you had a, a date planned and you haven't seen him in a few days and maybe you had the whole day to hang out and then he rung you and was like, listen, I've only got an hour. I'm sorry, I've got this plan with my wife, with my family. And then you're like, well, that really sucks because I was looking forward to that, but I, I want the hour because that's all I can get. So you're accepting the crumbs Instead of being like, no, I, I want the loaf. And if I'm not going to get the loaf, then I'm not going to settle for the crumbs. Um, so uh, that's one example. Another one is when he wants sex and you want the connection and that you feel that if you don't give him that, that you will lose out on the connection. So, so you're giving into him constantly his needs when your own needs aren't being met. 
Another way that you can be out of touch with your needs is by you saying, I don't know. And I've got a whole video on this. It is powerful, but I don't know, or the words that you speak are powerful. And when we're using words like, I don't know, you choose, what do you want? And constantly giving to them, making them the decider of the relationship together, giving all the power in his hands, then ultimately you have an unclear wall of what you're willing to, to have in a relationship. So there's no like equalness, it's all on him. And so it's so easy to be, to say these words, I don't know, and just give the power into his hands. But ultimately you do know what you want, Gavin deep down you do know what you want and so it's really important to get quiet to sit in some meditation to step away from the affair relationship and instead of resorting to these unconscious giving I don't know you choose what do you want all of that tune into what you want and this will help you get clearer on your boundaries and what you're seeking in the relationship um, another one is that you don't treat up, uh, speak up when you're not treated poorly. So do you suppress your voice of when you feel things aren't going right and you just silence it to keep the peace? And then another one is that you have an internal voice and then you have your actions. Your internal voice might be saying, uh, I know for me, when I was in the affair relationship, I was going never again, never again. This has got to stop. This has got to end. I don't want to be in an affair relationship, a triangle. And I would say that, but my actions weren't speaking that. And so another reason or another way that you can look into where your boundaries are unclear is where your heart is saying one thing and your actions are saying another thing. So that's another point of unclear boundaries. I also want to go into where he could be testing your boundaries. And I really want to highlight here, if you are with someone that is constantly violating your boundaries, it is because you are the perfect match for that experience. And so instead of pointing fingers on your affair partner and being like, this is him that is like doing this or like he, he he's narcissistic or he's not listening to my needs it's because you're holding a space for him to be able to violate that so it's really important if you want to take back your power we need to stop pointing fingers at the other person and instead start pointing it back at us and being like how am I <laughs> sorry how am I the perfect match for this experience why am I attracting this experience in my life if he is violating my boundaries? Where am I violating my own boundaries? Where am I allowing that to happen? And so it's really important to take the responsibility. I want to highlight where he could be pushing your boundaries, not as a way to give that power away, but just to be have our eyes open and then we know what to look out for and then we know how to set the boundaries because our eyes are open so one is he is persistent on your no and if you grew up in a family where your boundaries were constantly pushed you might actually feel like this is love that pushing it means actually has a sense of self-worth and significance but constantly pushing boundaries is not respectful and is not healthy in the long run so if he is constantly pushing for more and more and more and it's making you feel smaller and out of alignment with your own wants and needs then that's where he could be pushing your boundaries you've got to be clear is if he if he is pushing them you you ultimately are training him to be able to do that or to not be able to do that because ultimately there's people out in this world that he cannot push their boundaries because their boundaries are clear and so if he's pushing your boundaries it's because you're holding that space for that allowing that to happen um another one is uh making you feel bad when you do set boundaries and so if it, you feel uncomfortable with setting boundaries and when you do set boundaries uh 
he he might go into shutdown mode, little child mode, have a little tantrum or put it back on you. It can feel really uncomfortable to set the boundaries, but that doesn't mean the boundaries need to, don't need to be set. It just means that when you set boundaries, it's uncomfortable for him to receive it because he isn't used to having those boundaries set. Also, if your relationship has been built off lousy boundaries, as soon as you start setting those boundaries, it can be really uncomfortable for your affair partner to experience that. It can also feel like you're withdrawing your love which is not necessarily true. It just means that you're respecting yourself first. Okay, so the next one is justifying unhealthy behavior or simply just justifying the behavior that he's taking in this affair relationship and, and giving him the power for why his actions are acceptable. And it's so easy. Uh, th this is a trauma bond because essentially if you're not feeling fulfilled, by the actions but then you're supporting him for the actions that he's taking you're, you're fueling it you're feeding it and so it is unhealthy and it's important to understand where am I actually supporting his unhealthy behavior and this can look like things uh, for example really sympathizing with yeah like right now his kids aren't out of school so he can't leave there's a lot on his shoulders there's a lot in the workplace on his shoulders right now there's a big contract due in his work right now so I couldn't like set this boundary yet because that will stress him out you are putting him above your own or what you're willing to accept in a relationship and it's so easy for it to happen and it kind of happens unconsciously because you could be saying yeah but Kate he has this two million dollar contract that he hasn't got before and it actually is the gateway to an even bigger contract and if it falls through then it's it's like the end of this potential career that he's been working up for for 20 years and all these stories which are so easy to get fully sucked into but if you are suck, getting sucked into the story, then you are bonding through these unhealthy behaviors without actually looking at yourself here. All your focus in, is in supporting him without actually putting the lens back on yourself and being like, hold on a second, how am I feeling in this relationship? How is it making me feel? Is it lifting me up? And if it's not, it's, it's time to stop delaying when we can set boundaries and and sympathizing with well yeah his his kids got this pressure or his his wife often affairs happen when wives are sick um or affairs can happen when wives are sick and you can have these great stories that are amazing excuses for yeah I believe that that's why it can't happen right now but the truth is you must respect yourself first. And there can be all these reasons for why, 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 why. But if he is the right man for you, he would not want to see you hurting in the way that you are. And he would put you first no matter what obstacles are in his way. So it's really important here to really tune in to what stories are you allowing and feeding and justifying for why your relationship hasn't been able to, to move forward or to end right now because of what's going on in his life. I just want to add here another one is obviously I just painted a picture on external things that were happening in his life, but I also want to paint a picture on some internal things. He might be hot and cold or he might treat you with disrespect. And it could be like, oh, well, it was because he was really stressed that day. He didn't sleep at all that night. All these reasons why you're justifying his behavior. He had a tough childhood. His parents cheated and constantly cheated. And that's why he's in this relationship. But he's a good man. I believe they're a good person. I feel every person has beautiful goodness inside of them. That does not mean that you should lower your worth, your potential and what you should stand for because they are a nice person. You still deserve the worth, the respect, everything in a relationship. And if you're not getting it, it's time to break those trauma bond ties. 
Okay, so the next one is you ignore their bad behaviors when they're pointed out by others. And I want to quickly touch on when it's pointed out by others, when actually people actually point out bad behavior and you justify why their bad behavior happened. He had a bad sleep last night. We were running late. He's kind of still stressed. All of that, you're, you're ignoring these red flags and not actually allowing yourself to be like, yes, that is unhealthy. And that is something that I shouldn't stand for. The other thing that you could be ignoring them is obviously in a relationship, like a non-affair relationship, you've got your family and your friends and you might paint pictures around all the healthy things and really share all the healthy stories about your relationship and fully neglect to tell them about the night that you were crying all night or that you had to like run to the show, like go to the shower and the only time you could really allow your emotions out was when you were alone in the shower and not around people all these things or the time that he didn't show up when he said he was going to show up all these signs that are red flags uh you're neglecting to actually acknowledge because often it is scary oh sorry i just had to check that i was recording because often it is scary to acknowledge that, yeah, this is unhealthy. And when it is unhealthy, you have to face, well, is that something that I want to stand for in a relationship? And that can be scary because it can mean maybe I need to let this person go. And often we don't actually want to see that. And so it's easier to be in denial than to acknowledge what's going on. And in an affair relationship, it can be taken to a whole nother level because it's a secretive relationship. You're obviously not sharing everything. And so lots of this stuff can't be seen and it's easy to actually avoid a lot of this stuff because you're not out in public showing your relationship and people can't point out things like, hmm, is that actually healthy? And so it's easy for you say it's a, uh, a workplace relationship and it's a secret it's easy for you to talk about your boss or this co-worker in all the positive light without actually sharing the negative light um and because it's an affair relationship and no one knows about it no one's actually going to be able to catch that this is deeper this relationship is deeper than that they know about and so they're not going to pull up what they're seeing because they're not seeing it because you're not sharing it. And so it's really important to see uh, in your affair relationship, are you acknowledging everything or are you just sharing with the people that you care about most the, the rosy parts of the relationship or again, a fair relationship, the rosy parts of this relationship or this man that you sometimes talk about. Okay, so the next one is you feel addicted to them. And I really love this one. This one holds so much power in the trauma bonding signs is do you feel this intensity in your affair relationship? And it's all too common for this addiction to take place in affairs, especially because you've got these dopamine highs of this, this, this forbidden fruit that you, you have this relationship with someone that is forbidden. And then you also have these cortisol, cortisol lows of this deep stress, this, this self-loathing and putting yourself down for what you have done and not being able to actually have your affair partner fully. And so as much as the highs are so high, the lows are so low as well. And this can also give such a massive illusion of such a strong bond, intimacy and connection. But the truth is because everything is so spread apart, the depth feels really deep, but is it healthy? Is it healthy? So the addiction could look like you constantly checking your phone to see their whereabouts, to see have they like been active? Another one is to feel like fear. Like, what are they doing? Are they cheating on me? That is not healthy. A healthy relationship is where you feel whole together, but you also feel whole apart because you have each other. You know that you have each other and there's this not this constant need. And so especially in affair relationships is that intensity is so strong that it can be mistaken as chemistry uh, because it's so powerful. But I want you to really tune in is, is this addictive? Is this actually an unhealthy bond? And the way you see that is really, are, are you 
obsessing over them in your mind when you're apart? Are you obsessing over the actions that they've taken, the conversations that you've had? Healthy relationship is comfortable, it's easy, it flows. And, and when you're apart, it, it's, it's just as easy. You can be present with friends. You don't have to be obsessing about like their, their emotions, their, what, their actions, what are they doing when you're not together? So that is a big one is you're addicted to them. The next one is you fear standing up for yourself and your desires. And when we fear doing that, there is a lack of emotional depth to the relationship because you can't be fully vulnerable. And if you can't be fully vulnerable, then you're essentially wearing this mask of who you feel you need to be for them, but it's not going to actually make you feel fulfilled in the long run. So where are you shifting who you want to be in order to make them happy. And this can look like you being afraid to speak your truth because you don't want to hurt their feelings. This can look like you worrying about actions that you're taking because you feel that something you're going to do is wrong or it's going to upset them. This can look like you fearing you doing something because it's going to trigger an outburst or maybe you actually fear leaving. You feel like ultimately this is not going to serve you in the long run. It's time to go and you have this massive fear around ending it because you don't know are they going to hurt themselves? Is there going to be a massive outburst? How are they going to respond? And so you are altering the way that you show up for yourself in your life to make like to craft the right response out of them to make them happy and so this isn't healthy this is a trauma bond this is where you are changing yourself in order to get the right response that you want from them instead of having the freedom to be fully you and to not have to think about it because you know that whatever you do is going to be received with respect and care and presence when you do that with your loved one so really tune in are you losing a part of yourself to be loved by them because of the fear like you're walking on eggshells all the time and the last one is confusion and confusion is a big one in trauma bonding because it's essentially enmeshment is your you're enmeshed with them so you lose a part of yourself to form this identity of one and so this can look like you losing trust in yourself your own decisions and you often are seeking out the answers within your affair partner but the answers your affair partner give may not actually align with you and so you, you you've you've lost a part of you because you're making decisions through them and so confusion is another big one in trauma bonding now, obviously, there is so many different signs to look out for in a trauma bonding affair relationship. And if your affair relationship is trauma bonded, I have that other video on how to break trauma bonds. And if you're wanting to create a healthy, lasting, loving relationships long term, it is essential to be able to step away from these trauma bonds and be able to create wholeness inside of you first in order to, cre to create a healthy relationship. Because if you're creating a relationship through this trauma, this need to be loved, it, it's going to make you feel empty long term and it's going to be painful. That's why there's a lot of those intense highs and lows is because you're both bonding through your pain. So if this is something that you, you resonate with and you're like, whoa, a lot of these signs have really hit me, I have a quiz um, that I have created around signs that your affair relationship is a trauma bond. And I'll put the link below to support you and you can fill out the quiz. There's so many more um, topics to look out for so that you can see, is my affair relationship based off a trauma bond? And if it is, then we can start healing those trauma bonds so that you feel whole in yourself. I hope that helps. If you have any questions, you can message me, leave any comments below. Thank you for joining on this journey. I look forward to supporting you with more videos. Bye for now.